The legend of the Trojan War is one of the most famous tales of the ancient world. Very few stories have had such an impact upon so many people and in such a broad time frame. Today, the Iliad and the Odyssey are studied all around the world and yet these two are only a part of what used to be called the Epic Cycle, a collection of poems that covered the entirety of the Trojan War and its aftermath. Today, we will talk about these forgotten epics and how they came to be. The Iliad and the Odyssey are the only epics of the cycle that survive in full form today. It must be noted that these two were also written earlier than the rest of the epic cycle works. It is probable that the remaining six epics were created with the intent of weaving together the Iliad and the Odyssey, forming a cohesive tale that spans the entirety of the Trojan War. Drawing upon a centuries-old oral tradition, these six epics would serve as interconnected prequels and sequels. The final edition of the Trojan epic cycle was assembled by ancient Greek scholars in the city of Alexandria during the 3rd century BC, while the poems were, of course, written much earlier. Although the Iliad and the Odyssey were studied extensively for thousands of years and were passed on from generation to generation, the rest of the poems seem to have fallen out of favour, which is why only fragments of them survive today. There are four primary sources available which can provide information about these poems. The first source is the Greek tragedies, particularly those of Euripides, Aeschylus and Sophocles, which feature fragments and lines from these epics. The second source is a work called Libraries, written in the 1st century AD by a man known as Pseudo Apollodorus. This work contains very short summaries for each of the poems comprising the epic cycle. The third source is a work called Christomathy, written by an ancient Roman scholar called Proclus in the 2nd century AD. It contains fragments from each of the six lost poems of the cycle. The fourth and final source comes from the Byzantine scholars such as Photius of Constantinople and Eustathius of Thessalonica, who, in their works concerning the Iliad and the Odyssey, included information about the rest of the epics too. The first epic is called Cypria and it was written by a man called Stasinus of Cyprus. Comprised of 11 books, the date that this epic was composed remains unknown, but it was almost certainly written later than the 6th century BC. The Cypria is by far the largest of the poems, not in size, but in regards to the time frame that it covers. It starts with the origin of the conflict, which was the dispute about beauty between the goddesses Athena, Hera and Aphrodite, which is then followed by the abduction of Helen and the war preparations of the Greeks. It then covers the long sea voyage of the Greeks, who upon arriving at Troy, conquer the nearby settlements and begin the siege of the city. The writer then describes the first nine years of the siege very briefly. The second epic is the Iliad, which was written by Homer around the late 8th century BC and was comprised of 24 books. The Iliad starts at the beginning of the war's 10th year, where a fight between Achilles and Agamemnon over Briseis breaks out, resulting to the refusal of Achilles to further participate in the war. It then continues, covering long epic battles with hundreds of heroes and gods fighting against each other. In one of these conflicts, Patroclus is killed by Hector, an event which makes Achilles rejoin the war. In order to avenge Patroclus, Achilles challenges Hector to a duel and kills him. The poem ends with King Priam imploring Achilles to give Hector's body back in order to give his son a proper burial. Moved by Priam's plea, Achilles ultimately agrees. The third epic is called Ethiopis and it was written by a man called Arctinus of Miletus. Ethiopis was composed around the 7th century BC and it was comprised of five books. It opens with the arrival of the Trojan allies after Hector's funeral. First came the Amazons, led by the warrior queen Penthesilia. Initially, they dominated the battlefield, but Achilles managed to kill Penthesilia in combat, falling in love with her after her death. After the leader was killed, the Amazons retreated. Then followed the arrival of the Ethiopians, led by the warrior king Memnon. 
while he dominated the battlefield, he too was ultimately killed by Achilles. After Memnon's death, Achilles led a charge against the walls of Troy and it was there that he met his demise when he was pierced by an arrow which was shot by Paris with the help of Apollo. The Greeks managed to retrieve his body and a great funeral was held in his honour. The fourth epic is called The Little Iliad. It was comprised of four books and it was written by Leskis of Lesphos around the 7th century BC. This epic begins with the funerary games of Achilles, where Odysseus and Ajax compete with each other for the armour and weapons of Achilles. Odysseus wins the competition and Ajax goes insane with rage, impaling himself on a spear which resulted to his death. With Achilles and Ajax now dead, the Greeks had a shortage of heroes and needed to find a way to win the war. After capturing a Trojan seer, he told them what they needed to do to gain the gods' favour. First, they stole the Palladium of Troy, the divine statue that protected the city, and then they brought to Troy the great hero Neoptolemus, the son of Achilles, to take the place of his father, and he decimated the Trojans outside of the walls. Finally, they brought the bow of Heracles to Troy, which the hero Philoctetes used to kill Paris, the prince of Troy. When all that was accomplished, they finally built the famous Trojan horse. The poem ended with a brief account of the sack of Troy. The fifth epic is called Eleu Persis or Sack of Troy and it was written by Arctinus who also wrote the Aethiopis. The epic was comprised of two books and it was written around the 7th century BC. This poem provides a more detailed account of the sack of Troy. After the Greeks built the Trojan horse, they withdrew to the island of Tenedos. When the Trojans decided to let the horse inside the city, the signal was given. The Greek army returned from the island and the Greeks opened the gates from inside. A long and brutal sacking followed, during which some of the Greek heroes committed crimes that angered the gods. The result of the sack was the complete destruction of the city. Thus ended the Trojan War. The sixth epic is called Returns. It was comprised of five books and it was written by a man called Aegeus around the 6th century BC. The poem covers the return journey of the Greek heroes back to their homes. Some of them faced divine punishment for their wartime crimes and perished in the sea. Others embarked on new journeys, exploring new lands and founding kingdoms of their own. Finally, a fortunate few made it back home safely. The two main storylines though are those of Agamemnon who returned home but was murdered by his wife and Menelaus who had a long and rough voyage but finally returned to Sparta together with Helen. The seventh epic is the Odyssey which was written by Homer around the late 8th century BC and was comprised of 24 books. In this poem, Homer narrates the journey of Odysseus back home. After enduring numerous trials and tribulations such as confronting a cyclops, encountering the enchantress Kiki, braving the temptations of the sirens, venturing into the underworld, losing his entire crew and spending seven years with Calypso, Odysseus finally reached Ithaca following a 20 year absence. Upon his arrival, he exacted vengeance on his wife's suitors who had plotted to seize his kingdom and possessions, thus reclaiming his rightful rule as the king of the island. The eighth and final epic of the Trojan cycle is called Telegony. It was comprised of two books. It was written by Eugemon of Cyrene around the 6th century BC. In this epic, Odysseus, following the advice of the prophet Tiresias, travelled inland until he reached the region of the Sprotia in Epirus. There he married Queen Kalidiki, who bore him a son. But not long after, Kalidiki died and Odysseus departed once again for Ithaca, leaving his very young son to rule the Sprotia. Meanwhile, it is revealed that Kirki, the enchantress, bore a son named Telegonus with Odysseus during his stay on the island. When Kirki told him who his father actually was, Telegonus decided to sail to Ithaca in order to find him. In a tragic turn of events, when Telegonus arrived on the island, he accidentally killed Odysseus in a fight without knowing who he was. 
when he realized what he had done, he burst into tears as he mourned the loss of his own father. As the poem draws to a close, Telegonus, together with Telemachus, Odysseus' firstborn son, and Penelope, arrived on the island of Kirki. There, Kirki bestows immortality upon them, all before setting sail together towards the fabled Isles of the Blessed. There, Penelope marries Telegonus, Kiki marries Telemachus, and they live happily ever after. Admittedly, the whole story of the Telegony is a little bit peculiar, to say the least. As we can see, the Iliad and the Odyssey stand out as the most extensive epics within the cycle, both consisting of 24 total books. All the other epics were notably smaller in scale, they were also composed by different authors and at different times. As a consequence, these epics occasionally contradicted each other, leading to a less cohesive outcome for the epic cycle than what the Greek scholars had envisioned. Furthermore, the individual epics themselves were defective at times. Rather than possessing a solid foundation and being rich in poetic elements like the Iliad and the Odyssey, some of these epics appeared as a collection of disparate stories brought together. Considering this, in conjunction with the ancient Greeks' familiarity with the details of the Trojan War through their strong oral tradition, it is possible that they may not have felt as compelled to preserve the other poems to the same degree as the Iliad and the Odyssey. Nevertheless, as there is no oral tradition regarding the Trojan War anymore, the fragments of the six lost epics provide valuable information for us. Such information is essential for comprehending the complete story of the Trojan War.